So yeah, my small testimony is um, God showed me many times that who my husband was, but many times um, I whew, I would like think, no, this is not you, God, and I had people speak into my life. This is why we can't have itching ears and, you know, put our business out before the wrong people or just period that we're supposed to go to God um, with what he, um, wh I'm sorry, we're supposed to go to God for what it, whatever is plaguing us, whatever questions that we have and we have been taught to depend on man for their opinion or to have a need for somebody else's quick answer or instant gratification, you know. Um, and that's how we have been groomed is just go ask such and such. They, they know the answer. But a lot of times it's not God's answer. And a lot of times God's answer isn't going to make sense to you. And this is where faith comes in. When you're asking who your your spouse is or who God um, desires you to marry. Um, and God has showed you many times. It's not going to make sense to you. Um, especially if you're operating from an unforgiving heart, a heart that's um, unhealed, if you have a tit-for-tat type of spirit, um, if the person has, you know, done certain things in the past that you didn't like and um, you haven't forgiven them for that, it's not going to make sense to you because you haven't forgiven them. Um, but there's many times in my four years that God has been speaking to me, showing to me who my husband was and who I'm supposed to pray for through many miraculous ways. And I'll be like, man. And then I had to say, forgive me, Lord, because I would go into doubt. And like I said, I would allow somebody else to speak into my life that wasn't supposed to speak into my life. I ended up marrying the wrong person because I allowed a prophet to speak into my life. Um, and that turned out to be hell because, but I thank God because he allows things to happen for a reason, you know, to show us that he is God and he is with us and he is in control. But it is important to you don't have people speak into your life, especially if God didn't send them to you to speak into your life. Sometimes, you know, if you're in a relationship, you can complain. You know, I complained and I told people my business and I shouldn't have. You know, um, I've learned so much in my singleness um, to just take everything to God. Like, um, whatever I need just to take it to God, whatever questions I need answered, if I need clarity, I'm if I'm feeling confused to take it to God because he will answer you or else you'll just be in confusion if you letting the wrong people give you advice or speak into your life after God already told you in your spirit in many other ways, this is your husband, I want you to pray for them. This is your wife. I want you to pray for them. This is your kingdom is assignment. Even if they, you have um, been elevated with the Lord and they're at a certain place where they haven't, it doesn't mean that God isn't going to deliver them. It doesn't mean that they're, you know, not going to say yes to the Lord. God sees something deeper on their calling that we don't which is why the kingdom and assignment is so powerful and is so important because interceding for that individual breaks a whole lot of chains it breaks a whole lot of confusion it shows you laying down your life like jesus did 
it shows love for that individual. It's hard to sit and tarry and and for someone that <laughs> that um they're just in a different space than than you are um spiritually but it doesn't mean that they're gonna continue to stay in that space so so they may do things different and you may not like it um <laughs> They may not respond to you. They may ignore you, especially if you're not together. And they may, um, whatever they're doing and they're not with you is not your business. That's between them and God. Um, but it's our job to, um, as kingdom spouses, to pray for them because of their powerful calling. And so we can't, um, it's hard. It's, it's not, it's not easy because, because you're being ignored and things can be silent and you don't know what's going on. You're just like, man, I ain't nobody's punk. You know what I'm saying? Or man, this person takes me as a sucker, but God doesn't want us to have that type of mindset because God doesn't have that mindset for us. Like, um, my eyeliner, like when we, um, Whenever we come to him or whatever we have messed up or whenever we have like turned our back to him or shut our conscience off to God. He still had his arms open to us, you know, and um, God is teaching us to extend the same type of mercy, long suffering. If we're true Christians and we really love God, he's teaching us to have that same mercy for our spouses because if they're at a place and they don't know the love of God like you do, then you have to show them mercy. Because just like God showed you mercy because you didn't have, understand the love of God um, for you and how much God loves you. And so, you know, my testimony is I've been praying um, for someone that as many times as I've tried to push them out of my heart. God showed me a sign or something to tell me to continue to pray for this individual because this is your husband. And so many times I allow people, Jesus, why am I going to cry? I, <laughs> whew. So many times I allow people to speak into my life and I shouldn't have. Um, that's the wrong move. It's important to take everything to God because you get mixed messages and you go in, you fall into confusion when God already put it in your spirit. This person, this, what God, who God said to my husband, he'll call at times right in the middle of a prayer or right when my sons are praying or, um, God is, is like, his, mo his model and his make of his car, how God showed me, would just be riding by while he would be on my mind. It would be something when he would be on my mind that God would speak to me and he'll drop something in my spirit about him. I'm going to tell my testimony in a, in, in a deeper way, but because I see numbers and how God speaks to me in a powerful way, um, I just... One thing I remember somebody was praying for me uh, and my mom, she had an experience. She was in a hospital, but we were praying and she said, please give um, me the desires of my heart. And in the middle of her saying, give me the desires of my heart, the person that God said that I am to marry called right after that. And I have many situations where this had happened, my son come running around, mom, let's just pray. And as soon as he mentioned um, the person that I'm supposed to marry's name, he would call. And this is in prayer. And another time, it's so many, I got so many more stories, but there's another time my sons were praying with me and they mentioned his name and then he called. So um, it's so many ways and signs that God shows us and, and, and supernatural ways that he was, he's just like, look, this is your assignment. You are the help meet to this person. Cause this person 
is called to do great things. Okay? So listen to what the Spirit is telling you. Hold on to what God says because he, he continues to give assurance. It doesn't mean that you're weak or you're a punk because you show the love of God. Because if you think that about yourself, you think that about God. And God sent his son to die on the cross for people that spat on him, pulled out his beard. some evil things even now people still crucify jesus for what he um for how much love that he has showed he's still being crucified the same way by the mocking by the persecution by not by people thinking that their work is from their own hands and god didn't bless them you know then god isn't getting the glory no thanks no nothing you know um God sent his son to die for some pretty wicked people. So if you're thinking that you're being a little too soft or, you know, you're showing long suffering to somebody that continues to ignore you or you feel like they're rejecting you. Um, Jesus was rejected and he still rejected me. He's still being rejected. These are the, this is a cross that we must carry if we believe God, if we love God. If we believe in walking in our purpose, if you know that God has given us, so um, I am. I, I, don't, I didn't plan to be on this long, but it was on my heart to share my testimony. But yeah, I have been praying for someone that God says is my husband um, as well, and always interceding. Um, and sometimes I get weary. Um, but it's it's love for their soul, their salvation, for their deliverance, um, because they have a great calling. So don't give up. That's what I want to tell you. Jesus didn't give up on you. Mm, God isn't giving up on you. Don't give up on um, the powerful purpose, the plan that God has for your life. Jeremiah 29, 11, because he knows the plans that he has for you. And they're to prosper you and not to harm you, but to lead you to an expected end. So it's greatness. And Romans 8, 18, the sufferings of this, this the sufferings of this time shall not be compared to the glory that is getting ready to be revealed in you. Continue, continue to Show love for your spouse by praying those demons away, those demons of addiction, lust and perversion, confusion, the weight of this world, the weight of the mistakes that have that is on them. They're being tormented in their mind. They're, they're having to make a decision to choose God and to denounce the seducing spirits that are thrown at them all the time of this world to try to keep them bound. The devil doesn't want any of our spouses that we're praying for to go. Not the mind. They want, the devil wants them destroyed. So continue to pray that pride down in their lives, that desire to lust after this world. Continue to pray that down. Those demons just want to continue want them to continue in their sin so he can so the de the demons can cause depression upon them so heavy so they can die or they can take this they can kill themselves this is why it's important to pray for who god assigned you to pray for this nation pray for the pride of this nation because um, 